Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, the Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. And for this week's roundtable, we've got the usual suspects. It's his birthday. Should we even sing happy birthday? Should we do like a quick birthday? Should we do the dun, 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 like 50 cent? It's your birthday. <laughs> Fairland Aaron. Happy birthday. Hey, Mark. Thanks for the birthday wishes. It's truly I love it spending it here with you guys. Yeah, it's a truly gift that you're even on the round table. Um, I'm, I'm uh, going to start streaming on Facebook here. So I'm not, I'm not ignoring as, as I do that. Hopefully it's working. Um, I just thought that you were getting all flustered because Scott Bossman's back. And like, uh, we know what happened last time. Two weeks in a row. Everything <laughs> stops, including the podcast. And yet, you know. Uh, <laughs> I, know. It's all I, good. See, I see Scott. I get all flush. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's all good. It's, it's, it's great. The it's great. Experience. Are you Dude, blushing, God. Scott? Scott Bossman's on. I think he's blushing. He, he's speechless. He can't even say anything. I, I'm <laughs> speechless. I'm flattered. What, I mean, what do you say? See? Move to beer. That's right. I, I think Zan is like Zano's so so like upset he's not even showing up anymore because uh, the love affair between uh, Mark and Bossman, like Zano's out. <laughs> Mike it may be a little jealous. <laughs> That's right. We'll 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 deal with Mike's jealousy in Orlando. It's okay, <laughs> you know we'll hug it out. Um, speaking of hugging it out, Eric Peterson, the technician. How are you, Eric? I'm good. Good to be here. Looking forward to boot camp. Same here. Same here. And then, you know who else is going to be at boot camp? The terrorist hunter, the most frightening woman in the world, Mimi Schmidt. How are you? Great. How are you? Happy birthday, Aaron. Thank you. And then we've got the go giver, Jeannie Morum. Hi, Jeannie. Hi. Hey, I'm trying to figure out the connection between you and Eric and the hugs. You just said hugs. So I'm trying to figure that out. There, there is no connection because oh. I've been hazing Eric for so long that if I, if I don't hug it out with him, he's going to start taking it personally. Yeah. Or his mom sure. will. His mom. Yeah, don't yeah. insult his right. mom. Yeah, yeah. And Mrs. Peterson, if you are listening to this podcast, we love Eric. Uh, and last but not least, we got to give Scott Todd, the professor, the brain, your flight school Sherpa, some love. And the way to give him some love is go to landmodo.com or scotttodd.net, where most importantly, you're not automating your Craigslist and your Facebook postings, postingdomination.com forward slash the land geek. Scott Todd, how are you? Mark, I'm great. How are you? I'm great. I'm great. Let's just get into it because Jeannie has a really interesting deal. And I'd love to hear what the round table would do if they were Jeannie. So Jeannie, what's Let's, let's walk through this deal. Okay, I have an opportunity to buy five acres in a, a county I've, I haven't worked yet before. And I found out that there's gonna be a freeway running close by the property and I confirmed that with the county. And it won't be passing, it won't be going through the property itself, but it will be going close by. And I'm not sure how to handle that. Do I purchase it, hold it? purchase it and sell it. So I'm, I'm just throwing this out to the round table. Yeah. I, th I think it's a, it's an interesting uh, deal um, in the path of growth in LA County. Mm -hmm. So Bearland Aaron, what would you do? Um, I don't know. That's a pretty good question. Really? Um, I, I guess my, one of my questions would be, is this a limited access freeway um you know how close um is it looking like you'll be to possibly an on-off ramp if it is um that sort of thing um i don't know really good question i'd like to hear what everybody else has to say i guess if it if it looks like it could increase the traffic in the area quite a bit it's probably a good thing but i don't really have any experience with it Okay. Uh, Eric Peterson, how about you? Um, 
Well, I, I guess, uh, you know, there might be some additional research that needs to be done on the property and the growth in the area and kind of the, the general trends that are happening there uh, to determine if it's worthwhile to hold. Um, I mean, it sounds interesting, uh, being that they're extending the freeway or putting a freeway in, um, that could be really beneficial. I mean, if, if your property happens to be adjacent to that freeway, I mean, you could lease for billboards. Um, you know, obviously you could, you could hold that property long term. Um, so, I mean, you have lots of options. I guess it just depends um, what you can learn about the development that's happening. I like it. I like it. Mimi Schmidt, how about you? This just brings up a lot of questions for me. Is it, is it actually on the highway? Have you, uh, what are the comps in the area? Are you getting a super great deal on it? And is it really in, is it in that path of growth? It, it, the, the freeway won't be on the property itself. It looks like about a mile, maybe a half a mile from the freeway. Okay. Okay. Is it zoned already for uh, commercial or residential? Residential. Oh. But but I will tell you there. Are, the reason I found out is we have a land geek member in our community that brought it up to brought it to my attention that he actually has family members that have have property there and the freeway is going through their property and they got a letter and they um and the and they're not getting all that much money for the property they're getting less than what they paid for wow so um a lot of un unanswered questions from the county yet so i'm still doing research right sounds like you got to get some more questions answered mm -hmm. before i could make a, a judgment on that one all right, dude, buddy, Scott Bossman, how about you? Yeah, I mean, it sounds sounds promising. Uh, we always talk about, you know, it's always good to acquire land if you can acquire it at the right price and in areas of growth. Uh, so sounds promising that this could be a, a good long-term investment. Uh, you know, depending on how far away it is, it is from the, from the uh, freeway. You know, if it's, if it's very close, like Eric said, I think billboards, uh, if it's a half mile, mile away, you know, that could be a great marketing tool for you in the future uh, in selling that property. So, yeah, it sounds to me like uh, it's, it's promising for sure. It just means a little bit more information. And, and I think you could use it to your benefit uh, on the selling side. Yeah, yeah. Scott Todd, how about you? Well, I mean, like other people have pointed out, it really all depends, right? Like it depends what you what you want to do. For for example, um, just because the interstate's going to run within a half mile or a mile of the location doesn't necessarily mean that that's going to uh, change the the market value from what it is, right? Like what will change the market value substantially as people moving in is growth, population growth. Population growth always changes the value of land, or population. Uh, what reduction always lowers the price of land. So price of land is always driven by population changes, shifts. So, you know, just because the interstate is going to be a half mile to a mile away, how far is the nearest intersect uh, uh, on ramp or off ramp? I mean, like I own some property where two major interstates um, merge. I mean, it's probably about the same situation, let's say a mile from that yet it's, it's probably a 20 minute drive just to get on the interstate of rural country road because they pass, but there's no, there's no on or off ramps. So the mere fact that they're going to put a interstate in there, it doesn't necessarily change what I, whether I would buy the property or not. What would change is, uh, do I think that this property has long-term growth potential in terms of the price that I then put into my pocket? pocket and hold it. Otherwise I treat it like any other property. I'm just going to market it and sell it on terms. And if I get a cash buyer, great. If I don't, great. If I do it on terms, no problem. But you know, I think that that's really kind of some of the questions you have to ask is what do I want to do long-term here with this one I'm buying? Do I want to hold it because I think that it will be worth more uh, later or do I just want to flip it and generate some cash today? Yeah. And Jeannie, I'd love to know who your neighbors are as well. And I'd love to know if uh you know 
building permits, what kind of volume is going on with planning and zoning. And that'll give you some clues as well. So, you know, once you get a full picture, um, you know, Mimi was just telling a story about one of her family members that was in the path of growth. They sold their land for a seven figure payday. And so, you know, this is what a lot of people do. A lot of land bankers is they, they buy in the path of growth, they hold, and it looks like a hockey stick. It just stays flat, flat, flat. Development comes in and then it, you know, it rises up. And, you know, we've all heard the, the story about the person that bought in the path of growth and becomes a millionaire. So it's a good problem to have, Jeannie. It's a good okay. problem to have. Okay. So it, it's, it's interesting. Um, you know, as you, you get those answers, you know, certainly come to me and partner, right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> so no worries. No worries. Um, moving on to our next topic. It's a kind of geeky topic, but it's one that I think um, could be valuable. If everyone, I don't know if everyone's familiar with Airtable. So this is one of my, and Eric Peterson, I think would agree, top tips of like the year is Airtable.com, which I actually came up with. If I can just toot toot my own horn here for a second after, you know, the merciless hazing that Eric would give me when I would do the tip of the week. That's not here or there. But Airtable, if you don't know what it is, is a combination of a database and a spreadsheet. Um, kind of like smartsheet.com. I think it's a little bit uh, easier to do. They have a lot of templates and there's a lot of power um, with that combination of a database and, and a spreadsheet that you can utilize in lots of different ways. So um, one of our members wanted to know, well, how are we personally using the power of Airtable? And there's all these types of integrations you can do with Zapier as well. So Berlin, Aaron, are you doing anything with your land business on Airtable? Um, I do a few things. Uh, one thing that comes to mind is actually, um, because I use my daughter to do my mailing. She does my envelopes and that sort of thing. And uh, I was originally using like a Google sheet for her to enter her, you know, the amount of envelopes she has done and that sort of thing. Um, and it was, it was kind of clunky. Um, so I set up a similar spreadsheet, kind of a, uh, a timesheet on Airtable and I integrated a zap with it. <clears throat> and what it does now is she uses a link and through one of the Airtable forms, she enters simply how many envelopes she did. And then it, uh, you know, calculates her pay and texts her back with a, uh, with a kind of a pay receipt that she's expecting this much money. So um, it's kind of a cool little thing. That's, that's one way we use it. That's really cool. I love it. I love it. Uh, Jeannie, are you using Airtable? Nope. Not at all. I'm an Excel person, so I'm going to look into it today. After we don't yeah. Know. Yeah, absolutely. I think you might like it. You might like it. Um, how about you, Eric Peterson? So I use it for a bunch of stuff. Um, one of the main things we use it for is managing our Craigslist ads. So um, I've talked about it before, but there's a, uh, there's a posting domination base available in the Airtable universe and uh, you can go download that template. But essentially what it's set up for is um, the Craigslist posting method with proxies. So we manage all the accounts, the proxies, the uh, available properties, the ad schedule and all that information right there in that uh, particular Airtable. Um, so that works really well for my, my Craigslist team. Um, I use it for a bunch of other stuff too. Um, mostly sharing of information with, you know, bookkeepers or, you know, other VAs um, that, that need access to, you know, kind of uh, rows of information. So. Very cool. And do you automate that communication with Zapier? Uh, certain aspects of it are automated. Yes. Very cool. Very cool. Mimi, how about you? Yes, I use it similarly to how Eric uses it. I've got an inventory so that the copywriter, ad posters, uh, my business manager, 
where they all know which properties I have available. And it's got, you know, the photo links in it and the pricing. Oh, so can maybe. Help me post ads on the. Uh, I like yeah, you you're kind of freezing. Yeah, you're kind of freezing up on us. Okay. Um, and then I, at my copywriter, he puts all the new ads every week in another tab. And then I have a tab with the proxies. Um, and then I have a tab with all of the current ads. I have a zap that puts them in there. And then I can download that table or that spreadsheet of all of the ads to get my flag rate. And I can watch which markets I'm getting the most leads out of. And then I have another tab where I put which which markets are performing best. So as kind of feedback copywriters. Very cool. Very, very geeky too. Uh, Scott Bossman, how about you? Oh, you're on mute. Here you go. Sorry. That's I'm okay. not using it yet. I'm using a combination of other things, uh, but it's definitely on my list to check out. Uh, there's been, you know, so much talk of it lately uh, and how helpful it is. I have, I have uh, looked around on there and I'm kind of brainstorming at this point how to, uh, how to make the transition over. Currently I'm using uh, Google drive for my VAs. I'm using uh, pipe drive uh, and using Slack as well. So I think I need to kind of, consolidate and this may be the tool to do that yeah that's really interesting you know what another tool you might want to look at is notion.ai that kind of can bring in all these various tools that you're using into one platform um as well nice. uh scott todd how about you well, a lot like Eric, I use this, um, I use this for a posting domination component. So we'll use it to, um, to collect ads from, from various Craigslist cities and post them in there into Craigslist or into Airtable. So we can see what, what properties people are advertising. We talk about that in posting domination. Uh, we use it for um, same thing that Eric, Eric created the template for the posting domination ad, ad kind of writers. So we use that. I use it for uh, other components. So I use it for um, kind of some land moto stuff to move stuff between, uh, between people. But it does bring up a good point, Mark. Like it brings up, this, this question brings up, I think, a, a great point, which is not necessarily like how are you using it, which is, I mean, it's kind of cool to hear how other people are using things. But really, you know, what you should, what you should be trying to first figure out is what problem you're trying to solve, right? And then using or leveraging that Airtable as a potential tool for it. So once you identify the, the tool or the, I'm sorry, the problem, then you say, okay, well, bam, I got this problem. Can Airtable fill it in? So it's almost like what Scott Bossman was saying. Like I got, I got all these different tools. Okay. Well, if they're working great, but if not, if you have a problem that's not being met, if you have an itch that's not being scratched, could Airtable be the solution for it as opposed to going to Airtable and saying, what can I use this thing for? Right, right. And, you know, I think that actually brings us to a great segue, because if you want to learn how to start identifying problems and actually accelerating your success in land investing, there's no better Sherpa to take you up that land investing mountain than Scott Todd. And it's a little program called Flight School. So if you want to learn more about enrolling in Flight School, you got to get on the phone with Dude Buddy, Scott Bossman, or the Zen Master, Mike Zeno. Just go to uh, thelandgeek.com forward slash training, schedule a call and, uh, and learn more there. So I think that's really interesting. So, um, oh, Bearland Aaron wants to know, what was the name of the posting base? Eric, what was the name of it? It's uh, posting domination base. Um, if you go to the Airtable universe, which is airtable.com slash universe, um, there's categories on the left side. You go into real estate and just scroll through and you'll see posting domination. I'll put the link in here for Aaron, but that's not going to help everyone else. So. All right. Great. Great. Um, you know, we could put the link in on the show notes. So. Okay. Or they can just uh, find that. it like I described there. They'll get to it. Yeah, yeah. So um, I want to thank everybody who's been watching a stream on Facebook, but now we've got to stop the stream so that you'll actually go to your uh, 
you know, podcast catcher or whatever it is. I use Downcast or podcasts on the App Store, whatever it is. Um, you know, we're everywhere and, um, and actually download and listen to the podcast. So you can actually listen to Eric Peterson's tip of the week. All right. So Eric, we're at that point now. We're going to put you on the spot and ask you for your tip of the week, a website, a resource, a book, a quote, something actionable for the art of passive income listeners to go improve their businesses, improve their lives. What do you got? All right, Mark. I think you're going to like this one, but I warn you, I don't know the pricing. It's called Podium or Podium, P-O-D-I-U-M dot com. And essentially, it's a tool for gathering reviews. And, and the way I happened to find this is um, someone used it for me um, based, you know, I bought something and uh, I later got a text message with this link asking for a review and uh, basically click the link from your text message. It launches open a, a browser and, um, you know, asks you to leave a quick review. Um, and it, I believe you have the opportunity to select kind of the default place you'd like the review to be made at. Um, but the user can also choose a different location. So Google reviews and Facebook and um, I don't even remember. There was, there was quite a few, I think Yelp was in there and, and so on, but um, kind of a interesting um, little tool to, uh, to try and get those reviews. I know um, a lot of people are trying to, to get reviews and uh, you know, anything to make that easier for the, the other side of the transaction is always a good thing. This is interesting. I, I think, you know, based on the pricing, um, it could be a great way to go. It says we have products and prices for every business size, and then you just schedule a, a demo with them. So there isn't any pricing on the site, which usually when I see that, I get kind of nervous, but yeah. maybe, not. maybe I'm, you know, I'm uh, jumping the gun, but I, um, I guess for, you know, for our business, like, I guess if you're doing tons of volume, Podium could help. But for our business, like, couldn't you just pick up the phone and say, hey, I'd really like. Yeah, I mean, and I send out links for reviews all the time. Um, and sometimes I get them, sometimes I don't. Um, but I will say, like, I went through this process. I actually got the message from, you know, someone that I purchased something from. And it was super easy. And it kind of just caught my attention. It was outside of email. Um, you know, it was this nice little short link and it just made it really easy. And I just went ahead and did it. So I don't know. Jeannie, what do you think? I don't know. I'm with you, Mark. I'm, <laughs> I'm simple. The simpler, the better. And I don't know. I'm going to look though, Eric. I'm going to look at it. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I mean, I think we should you know, sort of maybe hold back our scorn for maybe next week so we know the pricing. Um, Bearland Aaron, what about you? What do you think? Well, you know, I um, sometimes people will email a review back to me or something. Um, I've had people, you know, want to do some sort of review but not really understand technology, even though they have, you know, maybe a smartphone. Um, this might be, you know, easier, especially, especially if you're looking maybe for a review on the buy side, um, for, you know, acquisitions, because a lot of times those people aren't that savvy to make a video or an audio recording and know how to upload it to you, that sort of thing. But, you know, if they get a link to their, their phone and you let them know ahead of time, Hey, I'm going to send you this link, just click on it. And, you know, you can do it right there. Um, you know, it might increase a little bit, but it does depend on pricing. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Mimi, would you, could you see yourself using this in your business? Yeah, definitely. All right. Have you ever had a, a struggle getting a testimonial? It's just, uh, it seems like it makes it a little easier. All right. Look, you know, we all live by that philosophy. We can always make more money. Can't get more time. So there you go. How about you, dude, buddy? 
Uh, to me, I'd, I'd love to try it. Um, you know, I think uh, I, I badger people sometimes for testimonials and it's inconvenient for them to leave whatever they're doing, go sit down at the computer and type something out for me, whether it's on Facebook or an email or whatever. So sounds like uh, if we can make this process easier for our customers, uh, I would definitely look into something like that. I like it. Scott Todd, how about you? Uh, look, I don't make a, I don't make a big effort to go get testimonials, right? Like, so for me, I'm like, eh, it's not that, uh, that, that big of a deal, but that's not a problem I'm trying to solve. So, but if it was this, I'd look into it. I'm shocked actually by that response. I would think that anything Eric recommends, you'd be like, this is amazing. See, you know, you see, like, that's the thing is like, I like Eric, I like everybody, but you know what? There's no like. There's no like, oh my gosh, Scott Bossman's here. I'm so like overwhelmed and happy kind of moment because Eric's here. Like last week, Mark. You know what I'm talking about? Please replay last week's and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. Literally, the show stops when Bossman shows up. Yet Mimi comes in and it's just like, hey, hey Mimi's here. <laughs> I, you know what? When Mimi first started on the podcast, I did have shiny object syndrome. Okay. Same thing with Jeannie. All right. If anyone should be complaining, it's probably Bearland Aaron. <laughs> he probably has a legitimate gripe. I'm cool. It'll, fa it'll fade quickly. On, it'll on fade quickly. Birthday. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, for those of you listening to this, uh, he tate, tate's so offended. He, he's not even here. Tate, like, tate's tate's out. The Brady Bunch tate's, is breaking up. Tate's got thick skin. He's cool. Unlike he said he's not coming back. <laughs> <laughs> We got it until he gets some love. He's so pretentious he couldn't even get a start, let alone a hard stop. So. Oh, oh, man. We're slamming him in the dude he's not even here. I hope he listens to this one. He, he's, in, he's in route to Orlando right now. He's going to go fishing. This guy's living oh, nice. the dream, by the way. Living the dream. He really is. Oh, my gosh. We all kind of are. But, you know, tomorrow I'll be in an airplane and Tate will be fishing i'm not i'm not jealous do i sound jealous <laughs> no more slightly you know so speaking of birthdays and jealousy scott todd just celebrated a birthday and i i voxed him i'm like so are you flying your wife to lunch today <laughs> i did not no even, even though even though we went um uh, we we uh, we had an easy Sunday, but then uh, the day before we had gone to the food and wine festival, so it was nice. Nice. Wow. Nice. I I feel I should wish Scott Todd a happy birthday because I I apparently missed it, man. I'm sorry. No, about it. Don't worry about it. It's all right. All right. All good. Yeah. Yeah. No worries. No worries. Um, I do remember. Scott boxing me like I've heard from everyone in the community except for Bearland Aaron that I film her. <laughs> you know what? I, but I, I don't. I don't like to get in. I don't like to do the whole triangle thing. Like I was just like just talk directly to the Bearland. So I didn't. I didn't say anything. Yeah, Mark, Mark's stirring the pot right now. Don't worry. You started it. <laughs> <laughs> me. I'm finishing it. No, you started by your claim that, oh, I'm surprised that Scott didn't have like this lava fest over uh, the Eric's. <laughs> and I just threw it back. That's all I did. And then, yeah, no, I started. No, no, this is, no, no, this is residual resentment from the very beginning of the podcast. <laughs> where you're like, oh, Scott Bossman's on. It started there. It started there. Okay. This man. is healthy. Get it all out. We'll I think it started it last week. Wait a minute, it we were last week. At that point, so it doesn't count. All right. <laughs> it's I'm not know, coming I'm next hearing, week. I'm hearing lots of jealousy. I think this is hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> Causing all of these conflicted feelings. Right. We'll, we'll work it out. We'll work it out. Zeno's the one I'm worried about uh, in Orlando, honestly. Um, that, that bromance is just intense. To, to the point where, like, the wives are, like, you know, kind of, like, it's – do you guys think it's weird that our husbands won't sit with us at dinner? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, 
Do you think it's fair? I don't want to I don't, go, I don't over go over in bed and talk to Mike. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Hey, I don't know about the rest of you, but aren't you just wondering what Scott Todd is doing? I and mean, he's doing some workouts there. Did you see him going in and out of the screen and stretching <laughs> today? I mean, no, no, I'm, no, I've no. been busy watching him all all hour. Uh, <laughs> yeah, bring, bring it up. I got pe I got people that are like keep coming to my house. I'm trying to figure out what the heck's going on around here. There's no, there's nothing like, there's nothing going on here. <laughs> then I dropped, I dropped something. Yeah. So I'm, I'm interrupting the show. Sorry. Nervous. <laughs> Nervous. That's right. no, I think Mark got him so Works flustered. Up. He's throwing stuff. <laughs> that's throwing that's, staplers. That's my talent. That's my talent. My. My three kids would, would tell me, you know, all the time, dad, you're so annoying. <laughs> and I'm like, look, if I'm going to do something, I want to be the best at it. <laughs> be the most annoying. Exactly so, right. Um, but hopefully those of you listening to the podcast are not annoyed. And uh, I want to thank all of you for taking time out. Hopefully you're getting some value um, on the podcasts. And if you are, please do us a favor. Please subscribe, rate, and review the podcast send us a screenshot of that review to support at thelandgeek.com. We're going to send you for free the $97 passive income launch kit. And again, don't be shy. Get on a call with Scott and Mike. Go to thelandgeek.com forward slash training and learn more about the power of taking flight with your flight instructor, Scott Todd. So um, are we good, everyone? All right. Are we, are we going to do this? All right, now we're going to do it fast, right? We're going to do like a one, two, three count, right? Okay. I'm still going to be quiet. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. It's your, it's your birthday. Shout from the rooftops. Here. Shout, yeah, exactly. One, two, three. Let freedom ring. I thought we were going to do it fast. I know. I so do. <laughs> was that not fast no it fell fast to me no all right well there's always next week all right <laughs> thanks everybody and uh we'll be talking about orlando boot camp on the next uh podcast can't wait to see everybody it's a thanks. great trip everybody yep travel safe see you there all right thanks everyone <laughs>